So this is our second video on Cleopatra. Again, really another introductory video. And I want to quickly look at Alexander the Great and how he's connected to uh, Cleopatra. Cleopatra seven, by the way. Now Cleopatra is Cleopatra seven. Well, in class you would do this, learn about his conquest, epithets, why is he called the Great? Loads of key words that we'll come into uh, during the lesson itself. So, Alexander the Great is Alexander of Macedon, Alexander the Second of Macedon. Macedonia was a Greek state in the north of the Greek peninsula. To many other Greeks, there were Athenians and Spartans, uh, sort of hillbillies and hicks. But by the time we're talking about sort of um, 325, 323s, 340s BC, it has become a very, very powerful nation, the most powerful nation in the, in the Greek confederacy. Led firstly by Alexander's father, Philip II. Old one eye here. And he's the one who created an enormous and extremely uh, effective war machine, the Macedonian war machine, based on a, a huge phalanx of troops with incredibly long spears called sarissas, about three times as long as the old fashioned Greek hoplite spears. Elite hippastets, um, sort of close order infantry, light infantry, more mobile swords, and most importantly for Alexander, heavy cavalry, companion cavalry, they're known as. And using these forces, Philip was able to conquer the whole of Greece and then planned to conquer the Persian Empire to attack it until he died. He died. And in 334 BC, Alexander, in, as a young man, inherits this incredible war machine, launches the attack on the Persian Empire, and over the next few years, conquers the Persian Empire. Three huge battles, Issus, Granicus, and Gogamela. And in these three battles, defeats the Persians, Conquers the empire from Egypt, takes part of India. Some of the comic of war elephants. So Alexander is called the Great because of this enormous empire he conquered as quite a young man over quite a short period of time, up until his death in 323 BC. So he starts the campaign, the 3 war. By 323, he's won, but then he dies as a young man. So what happens next? that really affects us. The Diodoci is the name given as a collective noun for his general. Obviously he can't do all his fighting by himself. He's got lots of um, generals, lots of commanders who work with him. And they're called the Diodoci. Men like Ptolemy, men like Seleucus. And after the death of, Cleo of, of Alexander, he plans for his empire to, to stay as one large empire. But he hasn't had time to sort this out. And so what happens instead, this empire breaks up into lots of smaller, still Greek-led empires. It's called the Funeral Games. After, it's a nickname given to a period of time after Alexander's death, when his generals were fighting each other to see who would get which part of his empire. And the person we're most bothered about is this guy here, Ptolemy, Ptolemy Soter, Ptolemy the first, Ptolemy Soter. So a Macedonian general, a friend of Alexander, one of his companions, and when Alexander dies, he takes control of Egypt. He gives himself the name Soter, saviour, save Egypt. Egypt is, not, is probably the richest part of the whole empire, and Ptolemy grabs it. As a governor first, doesn't pretend to be a king, but rules for a long time and eventually says, oh, you know what, I'm the king. I, you know what, I'm Pharaoh. And under his rule, Egypt becomes Hellenistic. 
It's ruled by Greeks. He builds a Greek city, Alexandria, with the huge famous lighthouse at Pharos. He builds a Greek city, Alexandria, a beautiful, very advanced, very culturally advanced city. In this city, he builds things like, apart from the lighthouse, the, the famous Library of Alexandria, where intellectuals from all over the world can go and live and discuss things and do great research. And that is Cleopatra's background. That is Cleopatra's family. They are Greeks. 